see here. All right, we got some people in here. So I'm going to go ahead, guys, and hop over to here. Um, Savan or someone, if you guys don't mind, can you just shoot over in the Telegram chat? Let me know if you can see this all right, this screen right here. Because um, for some reason, it's not giving me a chat window where I can see what you guys are saying in this while I'm over here. Turn this camera off so you guys can just focus on the uh, screen share here. Alright, cool. Thanks, Rock. Thanks, JC. Thanks, guys. Alright, uh, a couple people having difficulty getting in here. You guys hear that <laughs> that scratching noise in the background? I don't know how much this mic is picking up, but I got a little ferret running around in my office here with me right now. He usually lives, I got a room for him that he lives in, but uh, I brought him in here with me while I'm doing this so he can run around a different room. All right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into it here, guys. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Corey Smith with uh, CoreFX. I've been trading Forex about six years now. Um, I've got a bachelor's degree in international business from uh, Richard Stockton College in New Jersey, a uh, state school in New Jersey. I've been trading for six years. I've been trading professionally for two. Um, I've traded for a few different proprietary trading firms. Basically what a proprietary trading firm is, is uh, you join their company as a trader, you trade company capital, and they keep a percentage of the profits. So you take anywhere from a 70 to 30 to 80, 20 split. You as the trader keep the higher percentage. So if it's a 70, 30 split, you're trading a company account, you keep 70% of the profits, they keep 30% of the profits and that's the way it works. Um, for pretty much all prop trading, just to give everybody a little bit of an idea. Um, all right, let me fix it right here one second. Well, that's probably why. All right, I should have fixed it there. Let me see. All right, we should be good now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, so yeah, if you guys can, just let me know in that Telegram. I mean, I can keep switching back to this chat. I'm going to figure out, though, if there's anything I can do about this chat being able to notify me, 406 blank everything, hmm. It says my screen's still being shared. See if your internet's uh, working there, all right. see here what everyone says and then I'll hop back in the this chart here but as I was saying when I guess I lost you guys um, for those of you who don't know me my name is Corey Smith uh, founder of CoreFX I've been trading Forex for about six years um, I have a bachelor's degree in international business so I studied macroeconomics and all that stuff in school that's kind of halfway through my degree is what got me interested in the Forex markets I've always kind of dabbled with stocks and been big with trading but uh I really ultimately got into it when I was studying it and uh, I got turned on to the world of Forex that I'm sure all of you guys have the same kind of a story of once you found out about Forex you didn't even know it existed before it was one of them worlds that you know not many people know about um, so I got into Forex six years ago I've been trading professionally for two years I've traded with multiple different firms um, as a proprietary trader basically you work for a company as one of their traders, you trade their capital, and they keep a percentage of your profits in exchange. I've traded with some companies that just give you the money and let you go. I've traded with some that um, 
has a very extensive training and qualification process to get funded as a trader for the firm. So there's a ton of different options out there. There's, there's more expensive ones and there's cheaper ones, ones that give you more money, ones that give you less money. If anyone's looking to progress their future as a trader, proprietary trading is a huge recommendation I give. That, that was a huge, um, my trading was at a really good level two years ago when I started professional, but every month since then I've gotten better. Um, and a lot of it comes to being surrounded by professionals, you know, being around them, learning from them, them learning from me, all that kind of stuff. Um, and all this stuff I do with all you guys help me learn as well every day with all our interacting. But um, that's a little background on me. So I've, I do uh, my pre-week analysis videos. Actually, T3 Live asked me to do them for them. So if you see their website, T3 Live, um, on their YouTube channel, I've got my own playlist on there, CoreFX pre-week analysis that I do for them. T3 Live is the educational division of T3 Trading Group. They're, uh, I believe, NASDAQ uh, listed company, huge trading company. Scott Redler's the CEO, one of the biggest stock analysts you can find out there. He's always on CNBC and Fox Business, you name it. Um, so I do professional analysis for them as well, just in case anybody's curious as to my credentials and why you're in a webinar with some schmo who's talking about Forex. Um, I've been doing this professionally for some time. I've got some experience, but you know, I'm always learning. This is one of them things where you never stop learning. So what I'm going to do here is every week with my students here at CoreFX, I release a video um, going over technical analysis. I go over the majors, the US dollar cross pairs. Um, I go over all the majors pretty in depth. And then I go over some of the pairs that will be on my watch list that I'll be watching for setups this week. This video, I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth into the analysis. I'll go a little bit further into the technical analysis for each chart. At the end, I'll take some questions. I'm not really going to be able to get to any questions throughout. Um, as I said, it's kind of hard to switch back and forth between that chat and this. I'll figure out all this webinar stuff moving forward, you know, once I test out some of these different companies and figure out which one I want to go with. Um, but this is hopefully going to be something that I turn into a regular ongoing thing. Um, Everyone, all right, Lasigo still doesn't have sound. Anyone else who's having any trouble hearing or seeing anything, can you say something right now? Savan, you can hear, all right. Everyone else, can you guys hear good in here? Lasigo, I'm sorry, man, I don't know what to do. Maybe try resetting your internet, exit out of all your browsers and re-enter. Um, a lot of times you might have to reset your computer. Maybe you have Skype or something like that up that's stealing your speaker or microphone or something like that. Uh, check and see something like that. For the most part, everyone else is saying they can hear good. So uh, jump in and try to get that. I got to keep this rolling here, but try to see if you can do it and fix it that way. Sorry, man. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do a quick little breakdown of all these pairs. I'll open it up for questions at the end, see if you guys have any questions on anything in particular. Uh, moving forward here, I'll have more webinars based on particular topics. Whether I ask everybody to vote on a topic or just pick random ones. Um, I'm also going to start doing webinars privately for my students more often once I get all this stuff set up here. It's, I just officially launched a couple months ago um, the Core FX course. So I've really been spending a lot of time behind the scenes trying to set things up, trying to get things going, working on different options. So uh, bear with me here, my students. You guys know I'm, I'm always here for any questions, anything like that. But we're going to get a little more in depth here. Um, both free publicly and, and student wise. So starting here with the Euro dollar, I'm sure a lot of you guys know majority of trading that happens is going to be around this pair. Um, just what jumps out at me from this weekly chart here, uh, we can throw a Fibonacci level from this last huge move we made back in 2014 down to the lows we hit here in 2017. And you can see this 618 is really where this strong we got a supply zone here, it's an overhead resistance, and it's a 618 Fib level. Um, anyone that goes through my training knows the, the, the 382, the 50, and the 618 are my golden, and a lot of, for I, I base that off of what most of the pros and banks use. Um, but those are going to be my three go-to. When the 618 is broken to me, that's when a retracement is, is, obviously, a retracement can go all the way back to 100% and still be considered a retracement. But that's when you know I stop looking for those pullback or trend continuation moves. 618 is a pretty strong holding level in my opinion and in my experience. So this euro has really been at a pretty critical level here, um, coming from a higher time frame. And on the weekly, we can see here it's been in a strong uptrend. We got price above all three moving averages. The golden cross happened here. 
with the 50 crossing above the 200 SMA. That's a big bullish occurrence here in, the, uh, in any chart for any kind of financial market you're analyzing. Um, but as you can see, we are basing here. We've had a strong move up, pull back, strong move up, pull back, we're consolidating, right? So we've got wicks to the downside with this hammer candle, wicks to the upside with these shooting stars. So we've got a lot of indecision in here. And what that tells us is there's an agreement between buyers and sellers. And eventually when we have consolidation like that, we get a strong pop out of it, right? So if we wanna consider this a flag pattern, a pennant, a flag, a wedge, whatever we wanna consider this consolidation here, we can take the flag pole leading up to it. And when we get a breakout, we can expect that to be our target, right? So around the 134 level up here could be a target on a long term. This is, you know, months or years to hit, but on a long term basis. And you can see we've got a lot of action up at that zone as well. So, um, and you can see here price moved through this pretty quickly. So there's not too much to break price up along the way. Um, but yeah, very, very bullish, trapped under this resistance, taking it to the daily. You can see this red, strong daily uptrend line we've got here, but then I've got these gray minor lines in here that are forming what we've got here as a consolidation, right? Like we were just saying, we're getting like a wedge pennant pattern. Basically the swing high to swing low is consolidating and closing in, getting tighter and tighter and tighter. When that happens, typically there is a break coming and when there's break coming we'll get a strong move of price and i'm not saying that this is definitely going to be to the upside this could very easily break to the downside and we could get a nice fall off reversal here um but what i'm saying is when price consolidates like this typically we have a nice pop out of it and what technical analysis and historical data tells us is there is more likely of a break to the upside in a trend like this than to the downside so what I'm going to be really watching is this counter trend line that we've got here in gray, where we can see price is pinned underneath. Taking to the four hour, it's a little sloppier looking. You can kind of adjust it a little, but you can see we're getting close to it here. So maybe we get a breakout, retest, enter long, something like that. But all in all, um, this isn't a very nice upward trending pattern. <clears throat> we've got it trapped under that resistance supply zone, which we know is a very, very strong area. And, um, something we'll be watching for for sure if it does break this trend line the next major target is going to be up here at this high around 125 but then from there we want to see a break of that and that would be a serious breakout once we can break this level all right so taking it over to the pound dollar uh, another pretty popular pair another one that is on an uptrend weekly so as you guys can see if you look back here this is where we had brexit right so we had Brexit sell off, sharp move lower, sharp move lower. We kind of triple bottomed out here and have been in a nice uptrend since. So we've recovered almost all of these losses from pre-Brexit, right? So this was when the Brexit vote happened back in, I think it was July, June, 2016. So we had this strong, huge weekly wild candle shot all the way up, then shot all the way down and then sold off from there. So we've recovered a lot of those losses and we have moved back up pretty significantly. And now, as you can see, this 200 SMA is causing some overhead resistance along with this zone. We've also got back here, you can see all this movement around this zone. So we're, we are weekly, made a higher high here, pulled back to set a higher low. We're now coming back up to retest this higher high, right? So basing it off market structure, you can see that. Taking it to the daily chart, you can see we set this higher high and broke out of this strong zone. And that's when we pulled back, set a higher low, came back and broke that higher low. So we did have a little bit of a break of structure here. However, price then broke back up and has set a new higher high again. So in here, we were kind of starting to teeter on trend reversing. Um, yeah, if you look at a higher time frame, you can see that we were still in the trend. It was just a pullback, but on the daily, we were starting to question the trend. And once we broke below this 50 SMA here, I started to get worried that this was gonna sell out, but it was an outside reversal. We broke below support and then quickly reversed back. So basically with the pound dollar, I don't have anything crazy going on as far as analysis goes, but next immediate target's gonna be 143 resistance over here. And what I'm really gonna be watching is either a failed break reversal off that or a breakout. You can either trade breakouts of this or retests. 
So essentially when you're a trend trader like I am and a lot of professional traders are, um, there's two real types of trades. There's a million different ways to trade them, but there's breakouts. So when an initial break of a zone, you enter to the upside or downside, and then there's revert um, pullbacks. So that can be either just a regular pullback with a move, that can be a break and retest pullback. There's a number of different ways to trade all these, but basically pullbacks and breakouts. In my course I go over, if any of my students are in here, you guys see that we go over all um, the different kinds of trades you can build around them. But basically I'm waiting for this to come up to this zone and then I'll wait to see what to do around this zone based off any trades. Dollar CAD, another one here we can see on the weekly, it's in an uptrend now. So we had, um, just to give you guys a little idea of how I determine these trends, we had this low form tier, we're in a downtrend, right? Then we came up, this was the prior, so we made a lower low, lower high, lower low. This was the prior structure, the lower high. We came and broke it here, we set a higher high, right? That's the first step of, okay, trend could be broken, set a higher high, pulled back, set a higher low, didn't come back to validate to, to violate this point of structure. So this is a higher low. Then we pushed back up and set a new higher high, right? So we're in an uptrend. We're above the 50 SMA now, above the 20 SMA, above the 200 SMA. The 20 is still below the 50, but it's sloping upwards and it's gonna cross over if this continues moving, right? So not this past week, but the week before we had this very strong bullish breakout, breaking out of this strong zone we had here, right? And upon that breakout, we had this demand zone created. And now what price did this past week, it pulled back to retest this breakout. Now on these retests, what is important is if this support holds, when this resistance was broken, if it now becomes support, that is what's important. If this support area now holds, if price comes and breaks right below, right through it, this was a fake false breakout outside reverse, I call them. It broke outside the zone and then reversed back into it. So, um, that is what we'll have to be watching, but now we've got the 50 SMA acting as support, the prior structure, this, resist, this resistance that's now broken out, potentially turned support. You can see back in time, it was resistance as well, and support, I mean. So as you guys can see, this is at a critical level right now with dollar cat. Taking it to the daily, you can see we had this strong move up, setting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. 20 crossed all of them and is sloping upward. 50 sloping upward and is now crossing the 200. All bullish signs here. We set a higher high, higher low, higher high. Now this higher low is still holding. This is structure right here. You saw this rejection off of it. And if we drop it down to the four hour, you can see we've got a double bottom forming here, right? So this could be a trade opportunity depending on what your system is. Now there's always multiple ways to look at things. And you could say, well, on the four hour, if I throw this trend line out here, it broke the trend line, could be reversing. There's always a million ways to look at things. We could also be getting, you know, a right shoulder here, get a head and shoulders pattern and reverse. However, if you see on the higher time frames, we are in an uptrend. So I will be looking for long opportunities and this could possibly be an opportunity here with this double bottom. We had one touch, two touches, very strong demand zone, also support zone. And you can see this nice bullish engulfing pattern off of it with lots of rejection wicks. Last time I touched this zone, we got another bullish engulfing bounced off came back to touch again, so we'll have to see where that goes. But that's where we're at with dollar CAD, dollar yen. Take it to the weekly. Um, weekly and daily, we are in a downtrend. We're below the moving averages, setting lower lows, lower highs. This range that we were in for a while, we've finally broken out of. That's big. Um, that is something that we want to see. Price broke out of it, was able to stay below it, and now is moving lower again. So that's telling me very bearish sign for dollar yen. As you can see down here, we have the next major zone um, for price to approach. And you can see it was a major zone down here as well. So potentially we could see the yen go back down to 100 here. This is a very, very, very strong level at 100. So that's a whole nother discussion for another time if we make it down there, if it can make it through. But I love this close of this candle. Not only did it close below support, but it closed full bearish engulfing, I mean bearish momentum candle, right? So if we take it to the daily, we can see a strong breaking close below structure as well. Come on here. See this? We had three back-to-back -back strong bearish candles. If you guys watch my weekly pre-week analysis videos that I do through T3N on my own page, you can see that 
This was caused by risk off moves in the markets. U.S. stock markets crashed again, as you can see with the S&P 500. Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, you look at the dollar yen, looks exactly the same. Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. So that shows you how interrelated the stock markets are with the yen, right? So we came broke and closed below this level. Looking left, that's a pretty strong level. It was respected here, strong break there, respected in here, respected there. So this is a strong level, it broke below it. So now, what am I looking for it to do? I'm looking for it to, let's do that with this stupid thing. Um, I don't know why this brush isn't in the trend line section, that always bothers me, but. Um, I'm looking for it to pull back here, get back up to this nice strong zone, maybe even a little higher up into here, maybe retest this trend line coming through here, and then get a nice shorting opportunity to go short. So there's all there's setups around this breakout. You know, you could have entered short once we had this breakout, ride it down lower, maybe add more to your position on the retest before it rides lower, or you can wait for a retest. Four hour can show maybe some better opportunities of where to get a retest. As you can see, there are multiple areas to look for whether you're just looking for a retest in this general zone or you could look for um, maybe a supply zone like we've got a supply zone in here where price sold off hard out of um, you can look for price to bounce back up to there but all in all this is a great 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 look at this descending triangle we had lower highs coming down with the support holding descending triangle beautiful break lower this is picture perfect breakout to the downside all right, so that's dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc. Take it from the weekly. You can see this blue line here I label as the weekly strong trend lines. Um, so we have what well, this pair is a perfect example of a pair that I'm not typically looking to trade. And um, it is showing mixed signals. So basically what that's telling me is I've got different trend analysis on different time frames, And I'll to kind of break that down for you here. So we got a downtrend on the daily and the weekly, right? So we've got price setting lower lows, lower highs. We've got 20 and 50 crossing the 200, 20 below the 50, both of them sloping downward sharply. We set this lower low, pull back what looks like we're setting a lower high now. If you look on here, let me get this guy out of here. This is just annoying. Um, we had this price come up. We got a hanging man here. We've got a bearish engulfing. If we throw a fib level out here, from the prior swing high to the swing low. We've got a 382 Fib holding, right? So this is telling us, okay, that looks like a good shorting opportunity. We could ride it back down to, uh, you know, 93, 92.50 area down here. And that could be a good shorting opportunity to go short. We take it over to the daily and we got different story. Um, so, sorry, when I said it was on daily and weekly downtrend, I didn't mean that, I meant just weekly. This is why we have a mixed um, story here. So we were in a downtrend, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and then we didn't come down and set another lower low. What we did was we broke structure, lower high, now we retested this structure, I mean higher high, retested this structure, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. This could be a higher low. Now we have a little bit of a doji candle, off of this support, we have the 20 crossing above the 50, bullish sign, 20 sloping upward, price above both moving averages. This could be a bullish uh, trend now, right? And we've got a pullback here, and this could continue higher, make another higher high. So this is telling us uptrend. And then if we go down another time frame to the four hour, as you guys can see, we had this move. Price broke this trend line, retested it, and now it looks like it's ready to fall lower again, right? So we're above this daily strong zone. So we can't jump into conclusions yet about short or long because it kind of needs to break out of where we're at right now. But this is another one of those mixed time frame. Uh, I stay away from these kind of trades. There's 28 pairs that I analyze. There's no reason for me to try forcing a trend or a trade in a pair that I'm not seeing a clear picture on. So I stick to the clear pictures, the clear trades, the clear trends, right? So taking that over to the Aussie dollar now, um, here we can um, get a little bit of an idea here. So just from a visual standpoint, this looks like it's in a nice uptrend, right? If I throw this tool on it, um, here it is. If I throw this tool on it here, 
you guys can see this trend channel, right? Now it's not perfect. There's a little bit of bouncing in and out, but there's a trend channel. We've got a channel that price is following. And this blue line I have labeled the bottom of the trend channel. And I've been saying for some time that this could pull back to retest this trend line and potentially move higher. However, um, guess this is higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. On the weekly, it is respecting this trend. The moving averages have been chopping around. These have been really high swings in this trend, but it is still moving from bottom left to top right, respecting structure, right? So um, taking it to the daily, you can see when we throw a fib on this strong move that we made, we've broken the 618. 786 is still there, but we've broken the 618. Um, we made this strong move higher, but then we made this strong move lower. And then since then, we've had lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Could be lower high. Rallied back up, instantly sold back off. Friday, we had this strong wick as well. So, Aussie, um, not really the clearest trend. If anything, I could say maybe on the four hour, you got this low base here. Um, you could look for a break of this support, maybe a break and retest or just the breakout. That could be a potential trade, but uh, really not looking too clear on this pair as well. So I'm not going to be really chasing anything with it. Taking us to New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Now in this weekly, we've been in this strong range. We broke above the 200 SMA. We have been in a nice uptrend with this strong move. Pulled back. This could be a lower low. Now I have lower low in question mark because this could be a lower low and price could break out and continue to the upside or it could fail to break this resistance again and roll back over and this structure could be violated. It's not typically a lower low yet because we need to bounce off of it before it can be considered a lower low. Otherwise it's just a pullback and it could just be reversing. But this is a lower low. We have a lower high, lower low. We just need to see if it's validated by breaking out. As you can see with these black lines here, we are seeing a falling wedge in an uptrend. So basically what that means is we have an uptrend, price is falling lower, but you can see we're setting lower highs, higher lows, price is consolidating. Like I was showing you with the Euro, a breakout of this would be a nice idea, nice setup. The reason I have this in lower low also in question mark is if you look at my market structure, I got a higher high, higher low, retest of the higher high, so no broken structure to the upside, but range bound, retest to the lower low, then we have a lower high, and we did actually break this low. Now, um, the wick of this low is all the way down to here, but we did hypothetically break below that. We broke and closed below the structure of the bodies here, so you can see we do have um, a break of structure, but this 200 SMA held price and we are still in this pattern. So I am going to still be looking for a break. And if this breaks this counter trend line here to the upside out of this pattern, that'll be setting us a new higher high and we'll now be continuing this uptrend. So that's what I'll be watching here with New Zealand dollar. I'll be watching this pattern pretty closely. If it breaks out of the bottom of this pattern, not only will it be breaking the pattern, it'll be breaking the 200 SMA, setting a lower low. That'll tell me this trend has reversed. We could say we've got a little bit of a shoulder, head, shoulder here, but it's not really the cleanest. We got a sloppy neckline too. So really we got to wait for price to tell us something more convincing than this range bound choppiness we've been having. This, this is the kind of markets we wait for a, a confirmation to get in a trade, these are the kind of markets we are looking to make trades. Now, would you rather be long in a market like this or long in a market like this? That's the easy tell tell all with trend trading. You know, when you when you enter in a trend, you can have moves like this and like this. When you're in a range, you have moves like this, right? You have choppy wicks and choppy moves stopping you out all the time. You've got not big of winners. If you're trailing your stop, it shoots up, then it shoots back, and it shoots back up again. You get stopped out, missed out. So we want clear, strong trending pairs. That's why I look for and dive into analysis on pairs that are in strong trends, and that's what I look to trade. Um, now, moving out of the majors, I'm going to look at not all the rest of the pairs, but I'm going to do dive into some of the other pairs I'm analyzing here. I'm just going to hop in here and make sure everyone's good. Um, no sound here. 
good in terms of sound quality, no sound. Let me know guys if you're hearing all right here. Not yet, not yet, Savan. I'm gonna uh, go over some more pairs real quick and then we can hop into some questions. Um, just wanna make sure real quick everybody in here can hear and isn't having problems. I know, unfortunately, when you do stuff like this, there's gonna be some problems, some people have, but anybody in here that, that has any problems, just shoot me a message and I'll make sure to give you access to the recording. I am recording all of this, so I'll be able to get you access to it. Just uh, reach out to me. I'll make it out available on um, Vimeo or YouTube, either one of them. I've got both of them, so whichever one of them you want, I can do. Uh, just anybody in here? Um, yeah, of course. All right, so everybody can hear me good? Okay, I'm going to hop back in here. So now I'm not going to go over all the rest of the pairs. I'm going to have a pretty good list for you guys that I'm going to go over, um, but Basically, like I told you guys, I'm, I'm, I'll go over a couple that I can see reversing just to cover all the, the bounds. And I do have some setups I look for uh, as far as a long-term high probability reversal. But um, I'm going to go over some charts here, some other stuff. Um, I'll, I'll, cover, I'll cover Pound Aussie. I'm going to go over some other pairs here as well. So taking it over to um, New Zealand Yen. So we got a strong downtrend on the weekly and the daily. You can see prices below all the moving averages. Yes, this is range bound and it's not a nice clear trend, but we have been moving sharply lower. And as you guys can see with this blue line, this is a very significant weekly support here. Um, so we are on strong support and really basically what happens when we get to areas like this is there's two occurrences. We can get a bounce back into the range and uh, price moves off it, or we can get a break and a sharp move lower. Really. When you come up to a strong zone like this, either way it goes, there's typically a good move. Um, whether you get a bounce or you get a break. Now you can see this level here, we broke right through. Right here it was holding, but we had this strong Thursday, strong bearish candle lower. A lot of this again attributed to that yen strength that we saw. Um, however, we then came down and hit this zone, which is the overall strong zone. And as you can see with this doji candle, we've got long wicks to the upside and the downside. Basically what that tells us is buyers pushed the price up here, sellers came back in, pushed the price down here. There was a battle going on all day and it ended up closing just barely above where we opened, right? That's what this green candle means. It closed higher than the open, but the body being that small means it barely closed off. So that's gonna be a very indecisive candle. When we have an indecisive candle on a strong zone, that's telling us now we can get a breakout to the downside, sellers can win, get a strong move, or buyers can come back and win and we get a breakout to the upside. So this is a zone that we could be watching for opportunities. Um, this, this indecisive candle on the support tells me that there's potentially a strong move coming. Now we could just chop around and then make a move or we could make a strong move. Um, either way though, this is something that I will be watching for any kind of setup or um, you know breakout in either direction. CAD yen I'm also watching. If we back this out to the weekly, you can see we are on another similar level. This is also a strong demand zone. If you can see price moved around slowly in here and then popped out very aggressively. So we have come back down to that zone and we have gotten close to the bottom, but we haven't fully penetrated it. So that zone still holds. It's a strong support zone. We had a very bearish candle, not last week, the week before, but then this week after price tried to move higher as you can see with this wick but ultimately ended up closing down here so if you take it to the daily you can see you know price is coming down lower low lower high lower low lower high um we're on a strong level it is making a little bit of uh worrisome price action here we're pretty extended from the moving averages and we're having a little bit of an elliott wave um uh, diagonal type of correction reversal here but We'll have to wait and see another one. We're getting indecisive moves on this strong area. So it's something to watch either way it goes. We get a break and retest at this level. That would be a great trade setup. If we get a breakout to the upside, maybe a pullback retest, that could be a good long. So there's a couple different ways to look at all these. You gotta keep an open, open option here. 
um, so that we have all options on the table. We can never get too anchored to any one belief. If you think that there's nothing in the world stopping this from going lower and you're convinced that's going to be a short, um, you could lose a lot of money on that. You know, Because if you go short and it reverses, and then you're like, oh no, it's going to go short. It's going to, it's going to. And then it keeps going. Oh no, it's, it's definitely going to. It's definitely going to. It keeps going. Now you're talking. Uh, loss after loss after loss. And this is stuff that I've been through. Most traders have gone through. So you got to have a constantly changing outlook on these pairs. You can never anchor yourself to any one belief. Your bias has to always be open. If this support breaks, great. We'll look for opportunities to short it. But if it bounces off here, great. Maybe you look for opportunities to long it. But I'm not saying you have to be ready to play counter trend or trend trades. All I'm saying is you have to be ready to walk away or execute based off that. If you're a trend trader and you're looking for a break to the downside retest and it doesn't, it breaks to the upside, well, you want to wait till this is more of an established trend. You're off to another chart. Like I said, there's 28 different charts just on the major crosses and major pairs. So um, you just can't anchor yourself to any one belief and, and essentially you just need to constantly be adapting and changing and ready to trade anything. So taking us to the Aussie Yen I'm looking at next, another very similar setup. All three of these are very similar. Aussie's just a little bit ahead of the curve as far as the breakout goes. So you can see with this blue line, we're at a nice strong weekly support level. Um, price came down and hit this support, which was a nice demand zone, and immediately bounced off it. However, bears came right back in, saw this as a nice shorting opportunity, ripped it lower. Right, so um, it broke out of this support. It, if you look at it from another standpoint, we take this swing to this swing, that support was also a 50% Fib, so we broke that. 618 is the next Fibonacci level, that's important. But um, you can see with this swing move, we came down to test the 50 Fib, so we broke it. We have confirmed strong break lower and close down here below this level. You can see the 20 cross the 50, all three moving averages now sloping lower, and we're trading below all three as well. Taking to the daily, you can see that close a lot more. Um, you can see we set a lower low, lower high, lower low. Now what we could do is wait for a lower high to short it to catch that next lower low. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities within a trend to make money, but you can see now we did confirm this next lower low swing move lower. Take it to the four hour, you could be looking for maybe a pullback to this area maybe. You could even use this strong zone up here. Um, there's a number of different ways you can look for, but I would, I would ideally be looking for, you know, some kind of a pullback into the strong zone in here to go short again and then ride it to the next wave lower. So that's Aussie yen, um, pound Aussie. This one is very interesting. Um, I'll tell you why here. So looking at it from the weekly, you can see we have been in a nice uptrend, right? If you take a Fibonacci level from the last major swing move, you can see here, wet, broke about 50 Fib, um, 618 is approaching. You could also take the Fib from the last major move of this whole trending move, which is what I like to use mainly. Um, you can see right at the 318 is where we're approaching. Now we have some strong bullish momentum. You can see we're closing with no upper wicks. That's very momentum based candle price action um, you can see we've hit this strong zone here it's also a 200 SMA so price action looks very bullish however what I get worried about is this zone we're approaching now on the daily you can see got a nice uptrend being respected here right we had a nice ceiling here holding price but we broke out we're moving higher all looks good, bullish, 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 but we are approaching this very strong level. And then when we drop it down another time frame to the four hour, this is what kind of worries me here. Now we're in an uptrend. We've got price forming a rising wedge, right? So a rising wedge in an uptrend is a bearish reversal pattern. So that is telling us that Price is getting exhausted, basically. We're not getting these strong trending pushes anymore. We're getting these slow trickles higher, trickles higher. We're getting consolidation up here. And now again, this doesn't happen every time, but what happens a lot of the time with these is 
we hit this exhaustion phase. We run out of buyers. There's no more buyers coming in, as you can see with this staggered move, not really any clear price action. And then sellers see an opportunity and come into the market and we get a rollover. And the higher time frames really are confirming this as a possibility with this strong level we are approaching. So this is a pair I will be keeping an eye on as well as far as trend continuation and reversal. Now this easily reversal that we're seeing on the four hour off the zone could very easily just be a pullback off of this nice breakout on the daily retest and then we get the momentum to break out. Ideally that would be a very nice setup to see happen and that would um, bring everything together. The trend would stay intact. We could have an opportunity to get in on a nice trending move. The strong support resistance level held, that reversal pattern played out, and that would be ideal for a setup. So pound Aussie, that's what I'll be looking for there. Pound New Zealand, another one. So we recently set a new higher high. We were in this choppy price action, broke out, higher high. Indecision doji candle pulled back a little bit to retest this. Um, in the weekly here though, you can see that choppiness that we see there on the daily. This was kind of a range down in here that we were stuck in, right? We were just chopping around and these bullish moves did break us up and out of that. However, again, we got overhead resistance here. This is a little bit of a supply zone with this strong push away. We've got this 200 SMA, <clears throat> price could be coming up. Bounce, double top, one, two, drop, could be. You know, these are all hypotheticals. On the daily, however, we set a higher high, pull back for a higher low. Four hour could be a um, pullback trade. If you take it to the hourly, you can see this pullback looks like a nice little counter trend line, which we could play a break of that. Maybe a break retest push or just a break. However you trade them, that could be another trading possibility here. Got a little double bottom on this hourly, so something to keep an eye on in, in uh, the uptrend direction. However, once we get up to this, I wouldn't be looking to take target further than this 198 level and then go from there because that can be a very strong level on the daily and the weekly all right pound cad another one i want to watch this one on the weekly you can see we've been in a very nice uptrend break the, broke above the smas sma sloping upward it actually did not this past week the week after the week before i mean broke with this strong bullish candle we broke the 200 sma as you guys can see here, we broke up above it and we did get a little bit of a pullback off it. Price tried to push higher, but was unable to. And as you guys probably know, this is giving us a little shooting star candle. Now, um, it's not the biggest, strongest shooting star. We're not seeing wicks like here or wicks like even this candle. This is pretty much just a little wick. Um, however, it is still something to keep an eye on. We are at a pretty strong level, as you can see with the red dots going across. That's where price closed at on Friday. And you can see that's right at a strong level. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. It uh, did break the 200 SMA though. Um, taking it down to the daily chart, you can see we've been in an uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, higher high. We've had multiple candle pullback. So a nice long opportunity could be similar to the last pound pair we saw with this counter trend line. The hourly, you can see it even stronger. This counter trend line in here um, could be a nice opportunity to get back in this longer term trend to the upside. And as you can see, if we broke out around here, our target could be all the way back up there. And our stop could be, maybe if you have a pretty conservative stop, down here, right? So that's still going to give us about a two to one risk to reward up here with a stop down there. You can have stops all over more aggressive depending on your strategy, what you've tested and all. But that's a potential opportunity there for pound CAD. And then from pound CAD, I like watching Euro New Zealand. A little bit of a funky setup. But um, as you can see, the past few months even, we have been in a very tight range here. Right? On the weekly, you can see... We're still respecting this uptrend line. We are still on an uptrend, but we have been chopping around. We set this higher high, pulled back to retest this structure, higher low, and the higher low has been holding, but also has this lower high. So we could either break this trend and roll over, or what I would like to see is a break of this resistance, taken to the daily. We can see we're right at it. We've had back-to-back -back, um, dragonfly doji candles here on it, so we are seeing indecision. This could break out, and if we get a breakout, again, we've got a potential target at a minimum to back up there. 
Um, so that is a pretty good, on the daily, that's a pretty good pip move. It's about 300 pips. So that is a good opportunity. Um, could be good you know, trades to catch along that way, whether you're playing a retest of this zone after the break or just a breakout of this zone or pullbacks along the way. That can be some good opportunities there with Euro New Zealand, Euro Aussie. Um, another one here who's been in a beautiful uptrend, setting higher highs, higher lows. Um, it's a strong uptrend on the daily as well as the weekly. As you can see on the weekly, we've been setting higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Now what we could be doing here is peaking out, setting a higher low, and then continuing. Um, but essentially on the weekly, when we see a strong trend, we don't want to assume, oh, this is going to be the high, so I don't want to be looking for longs. Because as you can see, you could have thought this was the high, and then it kept going here. And then this was the high, and then it kept going here. Or you could have thought after this strong candle, oh, it's not going to go any higher. And then on the weekly, we had another bullish candle. That could have been some more good trades. So there's a lot of scenarios that could play out. And essentially, you don't want to count anything out or predict anything. If we're in a strong trend like this on a weekly, that's when I want to start going to the lower time frames and sniping trend continuation trades. On the daily, we set a higher high. We pulled back to retest it and then instantly popped back higher. Um, so taking it down even lower on the four hour, you can see we just Friday closed, broke and closed above this resistance. So this could just continue to run away. Could be a false outside reversal, pull back, or it could, you know, pull back and retest slightly and take off. As you can see though, this was perfect market structure, trending moves. We had this higher high, pull back to retest the higher low. Price broke out, pulled back prior resistance. Now support broke higher again. So this is beautiful price action here out of Euro Aussie. So when you see price action like that, you want to follow it and try to look for more opportunities. And the last one I'll really be watching here to start the week is Aussie New Zealand. I really do like this setup. In a downtrend on the week, we broke below all three moving averages, 20, 50, 200, trading below them all. We had a little low base pattern here, pinned below the 200 SMA, and then this past week, you could see price tried to move all the way up, just tapped that 200 SMA, ended up closing all the way down, breaking below this support. Switching it to the daily, you can see we've been in this low base here with this ranging price action. And then we had Thursday, Friday, strong bearish candles, broke and closed below the lows of these candles. So that's telling me bearish, bearish, bearish. What I'm gonna look for is either a breakout or a pullback. As you guys know, those are the types of trades you can have. So we could have a push lower, then maybe it pulls back up to this supply zone it created here, or even this zone somewhere in here. Like let's draw a zone in here. We could look for a push lower, pull back into this zone, reversal, and then short it. Um, but all in all, this is a nice downward trending move. We are seeing lower lows, lower highs, and strong bearish price action breaking and closing below. Aussie New Zealand's not typically a pair I look for too much because they're very correlated with each other. So as you can see, we get a lot of choppy moves. But when you have significant breaks of levels like that on any of these pairs, it's something that I keep an eye on. All right, guys, I'm going to hop over here and see if anybody... Um, hold on, let me see here. Uh, anybody that missed out on any of this, just reach out to me after this, and I will uh, give you access to it once I have it uploaded. Um, okay, so, Gene, I guess, Gene or John, I don't know how you pronounce your name, but uh, I'll just say it the American way, Gene. If it's wrong, just correct me if you want. Um, yeah, so anybody that has any questions or anything, throw them in there now. We've got a few minutes here at the end. I'll, I'll try to go over some stuff. Um, how do you put all your pairs to trade on the side? Oh, I'll show you that. So with this tool, if you see, normally the trading views like this, there's this little arrow here on the side. If you click that out, this little button up here, you can create a new list. And then when you create a new list, you give it a name. And then now your list is in this list and you can add whatever you want. Euro dollar, added. And you can go in and add any ones you want. And then you can just drag them around once they're in there. And you can make, like I do here, um, 
you can make different watch lists and I have one for the indexes you know all the uh, indices for each individual pair the Dixie the US dollar euro yen and then I've got all my pairs here that I keep there anytime Josh man thanks I appreciate it Savan yeah that's that's huge um, I, I don't know what I would do without that now that I'm so used to it um, that's one of those things that you don't realize until you use it how effective it is but yeah that, that makes analysis so easy to flip through anyone else have any questions or anything I know I covered a lot of pairs there so um, if you guys trade any different time frames Oh yeah, gold actually, I forgot about gold. Gold's at a pretty significant level to me too. Check this level. On the weekly chart, you guys can see higher highs, higher low, choppy structure here. Yeah, you can say this is choppy, but all in all, we're moving higher, right? We came up to this resistance and we pulled back and each time it's pulled back, it's going right back up. So this could be a significant breakout, of this 1360 level. Um, it's you know it's been moving higher here and with the sell-off in the stock markets this could if the sell-off continues now let me see I'll do a little correlation with you here in the equity markets this is the S&P 500 top 500 companies in the US uh, you know capital capital market share and all wise uh, 500 of the biggest stocks in the US all listed on the S&P 500 this is how you gauge the overall performance of the stock market. Now, the stock market doesn't necessarily mean the economy, but stock market is what's correlated with a lot of these things. So we had this push higher. We had, we had this parabolic uptrend all through 16 and 17. We had this sell off the beginning of this year, recovered from it, sold off again. And this level we're at here, if I take it to the daily more significantly, you can see here, this was a strong level. We came down, we tapped the 200 SMA, shot higher. We've sold off again and we are at 200 SMA again. We're at this trend line that you see has been respected multiple times. And this is a significant level. Now, this is at a significant level of the downside. Gold and stock markets have an inverse correlation, which means if the stock markets go down, typically, not all the time, but typically gold goes up. So we see the stock markets are at a very pivotal support zone. Now we see gold is at a very pivotal resistance zone. Basically, if the stock markets start to break lower and are looking like they're going to trade lower, that could be a good signal for you to look for a technical breakout on gold to trade that higher and vice versa. If, if the stock market respects this support again, 200 SMA again, and bounces and recovers, gold could respect this resistance again, bounce and sell off. So really um, up here is where I'm going to be keeping an eye on for gold to see if we get any kind of strong signals or breakouts are lower there hopefully that cleared up some of that there with gold with my thoughts at least now i'm not dropping into any of the smaller time frame technical analysis in this just because i'm trying to give you guys a little more like a directional bias type of breakdown um just kind of showing you on the higher time frame bigger picture if you wanted to break it down in the lower time frame four hour you know, you could be looking here, okay, if I think that this stock market's going to rally and this gold's going to respect this resistance, that's when you can start looking for, okay, I'm going to look for a double top off of this zone, or I'm going to look for it to go a little higher, give me a reversal pattern on this zone, right? Um, whatever it may be, or maybe even you trade the hourly, right? And when it's getting up into this zone, I want to look for a break of this trend line to then confirm with me that the trend's reversing and take it lower. So uh, when you start breaking it down into the smaller time frames is when you can start looking for those actual opportunities. But I'm just trying to break down general directional bias to uh, where. I mean, in my course, I go over all the exact ways of developing a strategy and how to trade pullbacks and breakouts, and I share my exact strategy and all that. But um, basically with this webinar, I just kind of wanted to give a directional bias and a little bit of an idea of how you can take these higher time frames and start breaking it down to smaller time frame um, opportunities. Uh, Rena, that's a, a tough question. It really depends on how you trade. Um, the way my course is developed, the way I've learned, and the way professional companies trade is to really identify what works for you with your personality, with your time period. Uh, 
do you work full time and have a bunch of kids you take care of? So you only have a couple hours at uh, the Asian session to look at the charts. Um, do you have a bunch of money you're sitting on and you don't have to work and you're behind the charts all the time? Uh, I would really figure out how much time you have. Then I would figure out what your personality is. Do you have the patience to trade the higher time frames, or are you too impatient? You need to trade the lower time frames. You need to figure out what kind of time frames, and then develop a strategy off that. Um, you can trade breakouts on the higher or lower time frame. It it really there's a million different ways to develop a strategy and make money. It's the most important answer to that question is to find out what is the best time frame for your personality specifically. Uh, the higher time frames can be more accurate. They can give you more confirmation that the breakout is happening and is significant. However, at the end of the day, um, you need to figure out what time frames you'll you'll be executing on based off of you know your life, your personality, your mental makeup, um, all that kind of stuff. Euro pound, yeah, uh, I'll take a look at that now, Savan. No problem, anytime for the analysis. Um, Euro pound, I'll show you why I didn't break this one down, just because. You know, like I said, I, I look for strong um, trends, and this you can see has been pretty range bound. This is a daily chart, but uh, immediately looking at it, what I'm seeing is a support zone that's held really since June of 2017, right? Price made a strong bearish move, got overextended, and then we had this massive, massive doji rejection off of it, right? So the story this candle is saying is here was the support. Here's where buyers came in, tried to push it lower. And instead of sellers being like, oh, I mean, sorry, this is where sellers came in, trying to push it lower and being like, oh, this is, this is breaking out, you know, like all aboard. And it really breaking out, we had buyers more so seeing, oh, this support is going to hold Look at how good of a buying opportunity this is to ride it back up to the top of this range and jumped in. Now we have this rejection off, this bullish engulfing pop off of there. So initially I'm thinking, okay, that could be a um, long opportunity, especially when you take it down this four hour. Look at the size of that wick. That is massive. So that shows a huge conviction that sellers were able to push it all the way down here, but the buyers then came in and won. So... Um, this could be a little bit of a double bottom here. So we could have a neckline. We could see a little trend line drawn here. And now what we're doing is waiting for this double bottom to play out, trend line to break, maybe retest, move higher. And really, if you look back at this range we've been in, um, if you're entering long here, there's no reason you shouldn't be trying to ride it back up to, you know, around 89 or so. All right now, this. There are definitely some trouble areas along the way. This zone in here will be tough to break. Uh, there's a bunch of zones in here. The, there's a lot of trouble it could reach along the way, but just from a general approach looking at it, um, I would either be looking for this now to roll over and confirm that this is breaking out of the range, or this could be a long opportunity back into the range to get back uh, off this bounce. So really, uh, it's at a conflicting point but no clear trend in either direction. So um, I don't have too much in terms of what I think it's gonna do, but I'm sure even like look at this prior move, right? This prior strong bearish move, we've retraced and this 618 is what's holding here still. So again, I told you guys, I love that 618, it's holding here. So it could roll over or it could break and move higher. Um, all in all though, it is at a strong, a strong level there. Yeah, no problem, Marina. The daily and the hourly on Euro Pound has a long wick. Is it viable in the future? Um, let me see what you mean here. Daily's got a long wick there, yes. Hourly, yeah, you can see this strong. And you can see it's it's rolling over here, right? So we're getting a little bit of a triple bottom even on the hourly, and it's rolling over. Uh, if you take a trend line on this hourly chart, you can see be right about there um, is where you could watch for a break of that counter trend line for the hourly. Um, this could be, yeah, this this viable as in um, like tradable for a long or, or what? Sorry, I'm just not really understanding the total question. Yeah, no 
problem, Simone. Oh man. <laughs> Bitcoin and what's that ripple, right? Um I haven't looked at either of those charts in a while. Oops. Let's start with the weekly. Ay ay ay. Not enough data yet with these pairs to really look back into history. Um but I mean yeah, this is Whew. This is, uh, we've got all kinds of stuff going on here. Nothing really too um, crazy. But you can see there's, there's trend lines. Uh, there hasn't really been a clear trend. This was moving lower, but then we broke higher. Then we moved lower again. Um, all in all, I mean, this 200 SMA, we're below. We're below the other SMAs. So I would definitely say more so to the bearish side. Especially, I don't know if you guys saw or not, but last week they had, um, um, hold on, Michelle, I'll get to that one sec, sorry. They had the G20 meetings, basically the top 20 economies, industrialized, like developed economies in the world, meet and go over. Um, uh, all right, Savan, man, see you later. Thanks for coming. They go over basically everything going on in the world, and cryptos was one of the talks about in the G20 meeting and there was a pretty big consensus uh, agreement between the countries there that the security problems with cryptocurrencies is creating a problem and they are going to enforce greater restrictions, um, regulation, which as you guys know, the cryptocurrency world does not want to hear regulation. So from a uh, fundamental standpoint, I would definitely be a little worried, especially, I mean, yeah, look at, if you look at this, you can see we're on this strong level here and the support's been holding, but every time price bounces off it, the bounce has been weaker and weaker, right? So the first bounce, we bounced up to here. Second bounce, we bounced up to here. Third bounce, if this explodes off of it, then yeah, maybe we could be getting a recovery. But if not, man, I, I could see this, this support not holding much longer. You can see that this this trend line is coming down here, closing in on the support, and it's really um, let's see if that's a 786 fib level too. No, it's below even the 786. So yeah, I mean, this ultimately does look like it's moving lower. Uh, it's below all the SMAs. Price is closing in. I I don't see much optimism to the upside right now out of this. This looks like it's going to keep getting crushed, but you know. Anything can happen with this stuff. Um, when drawing the trend line, which one is more accurate, one from the body or the wick of the candle? So basically, how I draw trend lines, um, I'll show you here. Either one you could go, um, either one you could do. What I do though is with trend lines, as with supply and demand, support resistance, Fibonacci, um, I don't look at them as exact points and uh, I th think it's best not to. What I do is essentially I'll connect a trend line using wicks and bodies wherever it hits the most areas. So as you can see with this, I connected all the wicks because they were all lining up. But then with this, I'm connecting wick, wick, body. Um, with this trend line, you can see that body's being hit and that wick's being hit. So it, I, I use trend lines as zones more so than I do actual points. I don't like saying I directly connect wicks or I directly connect bodies. I draw whatever is in the best area that's connecting all of them. I'll cut right through a wick if it's hitting the body of another bounce to a trend line. I'm trying to see if I can find an example here to just give you a visual. Um, so like with this, with this trend line pretty much, you see how I'm cutting through this wick, but it's connecting all these wicks and bodies, right? So I'll cut through wicks to make it this zone. That doesn't mean if it bounces up above it a little bit that I think it's invalidated, or if it just barely goes under and doesn't touch it, it didn't touch it. This this trend line to me now is a zone. If I could make these rectangles a zone angled, which I, I guess I, I essentially could if I did something like this. I'm just not going to do all that on a chart. If I, you know, well, that's going to read the candlesticks. But if I had a zone that was changing like that, that's where I would draw my trend lines as, not just an exact point, because I, I do view them more as a zone. 
if that answers your question. That's one of the most common questions I hear, actually. Arena, thanks for the analysis and insight. My question was based on a possible sell on euro pound based on each one of these four time frames. Sell on euro pound. Let me see here. Yeah, no problem, of course, for answering and all. Uh, now, again, it is on a strong level. So a selling opportunity for sure could happen. However, um, you saw the last time here this price broke below, it immediately got pushed back up, which means buyers are watching this zone and they see a good value opportunity to go long when price comes down here. So I wouldn't necessarily say that <clears throat> this is a good selling opportunity as it stands. If this holds here and price starts rolling over again, then yeah, maybe I could, I, I'd be able to say it looks like a good opportunity, but as of right now, you can see price is kind of bouncing and it looks like it might be now reversing. Um, I wouldn't particularly be looking for a sell on the euro pound right now. All right, no problem, man. Pound Aussie one hour, would you wait for the moving average cross before shorting? Pound Aussie one hour, moving average cross. Yeah, uh, so there's a couple things you could wait for before shorting. I would. I mean, like, I don't have a strategy based around this trade, so I can't really answer what my exact view is since I'm not trading it short necessarily because my strategy doesn't really call for that. But one thing I could say is I would have multiple confirmations and then a trigger. So your trigger could be the moving average crossover. So you could be waiting to short this, and as soon as the 20 crosses the 50, that's your trigger. Or it could be, you know, you want it to break this trend line and you want the moving averages to cross. And maybe maybe you get a retest and the, the moving averages now have caught up and crossed and that's your confirmation to short. Um, so specifically, me personally, uh, I don't have a, my strategy doesn't call for an exact trade setup based off of this. Um, however, I would take into big consideration this trend line because as I showed you, this is a, a rising wedge in an uptrend. So um, this is a pattern that most likely a lot of people are watching. And if you combine that moving average cross with that counter trend line breaking, that could be a good opportunity there for confirmation. <clears throat> Pound Swiss. I went over this already, but let me see here. Yeah, this one's one of those that's giving me mixed signals, man. Um, weekly chart, I see a lower low, lower high, bearish engulfing, potentially swinging down lower again on the daily. I see higher highs, higher lows, higher high set, retouch the lower, uh, the higher low. Could be a nice bounce to the upside. You got a potential target up here. You could have a potential stop, you know, down below prior structure, and that could be a nice setup. Um, but then if you go down to the four hour, as I was showing you guys, we have this uptrend move, it broke the trend line, retested it, and looks like it can be going short. So really getting mixed signals from the Euro pound, I mean the Euro Swiss. Um, a buy setup could be in there, but at the same time, uh, you know, it could also go short just as easily. Yeah, no problem, Gene, no problem. Um, Mike, you're welcome. Um, you shorted it too early if it's... Cut the loss. Where? What price did you get in at? And guys, if anyone else doesn't have questions, I'm pretty much just gonna answer a couple questions and then wrap this up. So, uh, thank you guys for attending. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys saw some value in this, and hopefully, you guys can join some more in the future. Um, yeah. If you want to check out the course, check it out. But uh, I'll be doing some webinars in the future as well. Make sure you check out my YouTube page. Um, and definitely check out the, um, analysis that I do every week. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Rock, can we do this every Sunday? I'm definitely planning on that becoming a thing. Uh, I still have to figure out cause I do the, um, analysis video for T3 live every weekend. That's where I do the full breakdown of the fundamental news going on and everything. Um, doing both of them on a Sunday would be pretty hard just cause a lot of time goes into that video and then this one I usually just record a quick one but uh, what I can do actually rock is every week <laughs> every week when I um, 
do my video for you guys where I just analyze them on my own, I could just start doing that. When I analyze them, I'll just stream it live. So to answer that question, yes, I'll start doing this every Sunday with you guys if you want. Um, I got to solidify my webinar service that I'm going to be using so that I can start hosting it with like, you know, more people in it. But um, I think this, this webinar service was real smooth. I like how it correlates with all my other stuff too. So um, yeah, I'll start. I want to start moving away from that full in-depth pre-week analysis video that I do with T3. I like providing a free video for everyone. Um, so maybe I'll do that one still and then I'll just do like a private short one like this. But I want to start as far as my, my students go, Rock. I want to start doing every other week or every month um, a, a live webinar based off a specific topic that you guys give me so that, you know, anything that I feel you guys are missing out through the lessons, I can throw into a live webinar, get that recorded, and then throw that into the lessons. Uh, all these webinars I do, though, I'm going to have a page for on the site for my students so you guys can access the past webinars. Um, but yeah, man, we'll, we'll work something out to do this every weekend. I really want to start doing a lot more content stuff in the future. I'm just trying to get all the eggs in a row with the company, but yeah, man. All right, Sean, sorry. So you got in at 83.29, you'd say? Let me see here. Is that your pound we're talking? I think that was your pound we're talking, right? Oh, pound Aussie. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pound Aussie. Okay, so... So with pound Aussie, you shorted it too soon. If it's not shorting, you're going to cut the loss to start fresh. All right, and then you said you got in at... I had one earlier and added to it. 82.81 and 83.29. Hmm. Okay, so you got in all the way up here. I mean, if you're already in, markets are closed, so right now there's nothing you can do. I would wait to see where they open. If they open up above this wick, up above your initial entry, yeah, I would definitely get out and wait. If it opens down here somewhere is lower, I would hold it, maybe adjust your stop to right above this first entry. Um, all in all, at this point, if the market opens below this, I would have your stop above this wick here. Because if price goes up above this wick, that's enough confirmation to invalidate this this setup here and potentially get out. Because even this upward trend line of this reversal pattern that we're watching here would probably be violated if we came up here. So I would give it some cushion off the top of this wick, a few pips or so up here, have your stop there and really base it off of how the market opens here today um, and, and take it from there. It's too... With, with not knowing how the gap is going to open here, it, it probably won't be a big gap, but without knowing how it's going to open, it's hard to really say, but I would definitely wait to see how it opens and then uh, go from there. Yeah, no problem. Man. Um, rock, yeah, yeah, I'm glad to hear that has clear sound. I'll, I'll go back and listen to the recording and make sure it all went well, but uh, yeah, Sean, no problem. Uh, I do like that as a, a short standpoint uh, I don't have that exact trade in my uh, strategy or that I'm watching to execute right now but I do like the way that's setting up for a reversal all right guys so if anyone else has any other questions I'm gonna stop the recording here um, let me know if you guys want the recording anybody 